Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you some basic tips and tricks on how to play an Elio, whether you're level 1, level 50, level 100. Um, we're primarily going to focus on playing this for lower level characters. Uh, not everyone will have the spell interruption, so we're going to play this with the spells neutral and primarily talk today about portal placement and how that works overall for you. So first things first, let's put down some portals. I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to put one here, because why not? So, you can see here, I can't hit the mob through the portals. The goal of portals is essentially, think of them like a mirror. If I am standing on this portal, or if I'm hitting something in this portal, wherever I'm standing over here, it's going to cast it over here. So if I cast a spell here, oh, I'm not going to hit that mob, I'm casting it diagonally and it's going through this portal. And same thing with that one, it's going to end up in the same spot. So if the portal is here and the mob is here, oh, I think I need to be here. Look at that. So what a lot of people don't know about playing Elio, and I think it is a very necessary skill to have, is that you can cast portals through your portals. I know, I sound like Exhibit right now talking about portals, but it's a great way to extend your range. So let's say I wanted to get to the other side of the map as quick as possible. I can simply cast my portal through that portal, and cast it there, and I'd put myself in the corner, and I could run back. Then on my next turn, I might run all the way up here, and maybe put a portal here, and put a portal here. Now I essentially have control over the entire map. Maybe on the following turn, I run through here, and I place that final portal there, and I can just keep hitting this mob, and running through the portals, always remembering to close my last portal. That's important, because even if I've gone through it, that portal will be open on my following turn. So let me pass my turn here. The next thing I want to talk about really quick is these numbers that we see on the portals. A lot of people think that it starts with number one, and then it goes to number two, and then it goes to number three, and it ends in number four. Those numbers have absolutely nothing to do with where your spell is going to end up. What that means is which portal is going to be replaced next when you summon your next portal. So we can only have a maximum of four portals in play. So if I wanted to place a portal here, and I look at my numbers, this portal is number one. So if I place a portal here, I'm going to be removing this portal from play bringing it up here, making this the new number four, this the new number three, this the new number two, and this the new number one. So now, if I want to hit this mob, all of these portals go to this one, because it's the furthest one away. So I need to envision, and we're going to let the timer run out here, this is more so for conversational piece. I want to make sure that I'm far, far enough away from one of these portals that wherever I cast, it's going to hit that mob. So if I cast through this one, I'm clearly not in the right spot. You can see I'm from this portal, I'm up three and over one with this portal being on the second cell. So I need to have, if I'm here and I am the portal, because remember, where if I cast through this, it's almost like I'm standing here. So I'm up three over one, there's the portal that will hit the mob. Now I'm going to move the mob closer to the portal to show you another spell. A lot of people also don't understand what some of these spells mean when it says, for instance, Parasite, my Elio is a Intel character, and it says it inflicts additional fire damage if cast through a portal. So again, I am up one, over one, and then two, up one, over one, and then two. We'll let the timer run out here. If I cast through here, it's like I'm on that portal, because I am basically here. And if I'm casting through this, I want the mob to be 
in mirror with me here. So I cast Parasite once. Almost did 1,500 damage. That's pretty great. Still have 6 AP. We're just going to end the turn there. And watch what happens after the Scarecrow's turn, or after the Punching Ball's turn. Parasite hit again. It's essentially a poison. So there are some spells, like Coalition, for instance, or Co I think I'm saying that correct, that if you cast it on an ally, it'll actually buff their AP more. Now, this is an enemy, so it's going to do nothing. Same thing with Focus. It would buff the power more. And that's important to note, because we also want to make sure that if we're doing portal work correctly, and we can also play a little bit of support, we're able to assist our allies a lot better. So if I wanted to move a portal right behind this mob, I could move here, because again, all of these portals are going. This is portal one. So if I cast through portal one, you can see I'm going to summon a portal here. But because that is portal one, it's going to replace this portal right here, and it's going to place it right there. Now, if we look at where our portals are, we can see, oh, none of them, I'm still not able to get right behind this mob. Where are my portals at? I've got one, three, two, and four. If I come over here and I just cast and move number one in this direction, remember, portals want to go in an easy line. So we're going to go from two to four to one to three. Now I can cast a spell through that and move that mob up. Why I chose Lightning Fist is irrelevant in this situation, but if for some reason you wanted to be directly behind it. So it's important to note and remember, the numbers don't actually mean where you're going to cast out of. In this situation, I'm casting through two and it's coming out of three. It just means which portal is going to be replaced next. So in this case, I move number one up here. My reason for picking that spot is slightly irrelevant. And let's see, we have four between us, so I would go back here. Now I have four in between myself here, four in between that portal there. Nope, that doesn't have enough range. But if I needed to, I can pull this mob back. Now there's two between it. I can walk forward too. Again, two here, two here, I'm casting through the portal. I love these spells. Well, that's essentially all I have today. Um, I'm going to keep this video relatively short. I will do a follow-up video showing how to play Elio with uh, more of the spells that you get after level 200. I wanted to keep this simple today, primarily showing uh, new players who may be experimenting with the class what you can still do at lower levels even without the interruption spell. So that's what I'll have today. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to drop a comment below. I'm happy to answer all questions I, that you may have. You can also find me in-game on the server Echo. My main character is Miko, spelled M-E-C-O-E. Or you can PM my Elio Makai, which is M-C-A-I.